Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the new Pat McGrath Labs Mega Celestial Divine, no, Mega Mothership. Oh gosh. One more time, Pat McGrath Labs, Mothership Mega, Celestial Divinity. This is a huge mouthful of a palette name, but it's also a huge mouthful of a palette size. This is a 18 pan eyeshadow palette, the first of its kind from Pat McGrath Labs. This finally got to me, and I do have a surprise for the end of this video, so do stick around until the end because you'll be happy that you did. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the swatches, my initial thoughts on this palette, as well as all the info on it and whether or not I think it is actually worth the money or not. So stay tuned for all of those thoughts. And if you want to know more high-end and luxury makeup reviews, do make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out. Now, without further ado, let's chat all about this monster big palette from Pat McGrath for holiday 2020. All right, so the first thing that I always talk about in every single makeup review is packaging. You guys know that packaging to me is actually fairly important, and I know that for some of you it's not so much, but we're paying heavy bank for these types of products in the high-end and luxury category, and I gotta make sure that this packaging justifies the cost. So with Pat McGrath, she is exceptional for having great packaging. My favorite packaging is the Mothership 10 Pan Palettes. This one is Divine Rose. As you can see it's hella metallic and you can see all the things on my desk. <laughs> but this is my favorite packaging style from her, but it comes at a cost. Each of these 10 pan palettes, the big motherships that are these guys here, they are 125 US dollars each and they come with 10 shades, which are 1.32 grams each. So they are her biggest size also. This is her latest packaging style, which is the cardboard. This is the second time she's done cardboard. The first time we've seen it was in Rose Decadence where it was like a book style. You just open it to like a cover. She's done cardboard with like a trifold before. That to me is actually my least favorite. Although if you are into like artistic design, you don't mind the palette being built in, then that's okay. I just found the packaging of those to be fairly bulky. So it was kind of harder to store and it's a big commitment for those. <laughs> they also weren't my favorite when it came to formulation. Some of the mattes in some of those were really hard to work with, even though they are offered a cheaper alternative. I didn't like that the formula didn't measure up to that. So even though she was not doing, you know, packaging like this, where of course it would justify a pretty expensive price point. This is heavy, it's lacquer, it's shiny, but the differences in quality didn't make me ever want to recommend those to you. I would rather just get you guys to invest in a larger palette and save the money that you would have spent on one of those other ones and put it towards a larger purchase when you have the funds to do so. You would have been a lot happier doing that. But but this is actually a new kind of hybrid that she's done. This isn't trifold, this is like a book. So it's just like this, just like Rose Decadence. This also has ribbons, so it holds it up like that. You can see that it holds it upward. You can see kind of on the edge, there are ribbons that hold this together. Now I have seen on some people's videos already that the ribbons tend to snap. <laughs> <laughs> so just be careful with that because it's not like the sturdiest construction ever, but while you have it, it's great. When you don't have them, they will open the palette completely flat. So then you just have to manually lift up the lid to access the mirror. This is the first time that we have seen the cardboard packaging. This is Rose Decadence. You can see here that it's a little bit different because it opens completely flat. It doesn't have the ribbon detailing on the edge that keeps it kind of you know, open this way, like how the Mothership Mega is. When she first announced this was gonna be an 18 pan palette, I was thinking this is gonna be in the hundreds of dollars. <laughs> if these 10 pan palettes are 125 US, I'm thinking these this one's gonna be, it's almost double the shades, so I'm thinking it's gonna be like at least 200. Luckily, she kept this at an affordable 78 American dollars, which, okay, affordability, you gotta think about perspective wise. It's affordable for Pat McGrath, not what I'm saying, an affordable price in general. But 78 American dollars for this bad boy, and it is 103 Canadian dollars. It's at Pat McGrath's website right now. It's also at Sephora. This one offers a smaller pan size also. 
So you can see here, this is the palette in full. I'm gonna see if I can show you guys. So this is the palette in full, absolutely stunning. We do have a couple repeats in this palette. This is actually due to the Star Wars collection being apparently a hell of a good launch. She has decided to bring some of these shades back, which has been amazing because a lot of people missed out on the Star Wars collection. If you didn't, then you have 12 out of these 18 shades already. So here's a zoomed in photo of the palette. You can see that the furthest left two columns are actually repeat shades. They are from Star Wars Dark Galaxy, which believe it or not was a tri-fold palette. So one that I'm going to talk about in a second. It was the packaging that that folded in three ways. So three different columns, if that makes sense. The furthest right columns are actually from Galactic Gold, another one of her tri-fold packaging styles, also from the Star Wars collection. The two new columns or the new shades in this palette, there are six of them. They're in this dead center of the palette. You can see here, they're absolutely stunning. They offer two new mattes and four new shimmers. Now, if you paid attention to kind of how the palette looks, it is very shimmer heavy, not so much matte heavy. There is one, two, three, three mattes in this entire thing. So out of 18 shades, three of them are matte. The rest of them are shimmer. This palette does offer quite a bit of duochrome shades. And in my opinion, the shimmers in these are spectacular. A lot of them have what I would consider a texture to them. They're fairly heavy when you swatch them. They have almost a little bit of a smooth grit to them. So these are going to be the types of shimmers that you are going to need to either use a mixing medium to keep that fallout at bay or apply it with a finger because otherwise that glitter is going to fall. It's just how the shadow has been created. The mixing liquid that I use is from Mehron? Miron. <laughs> it is a mixing fluid that actually Pat McGrath's makeup artists use also. That's how I actually purchased it was I saw them demoing this mixing fluid in some of her tutorials to get that really beautiful liquid metallic look to some of her shadows. It's stunning. So the palette size of each of these is 1.1 grams, different than the 1.32 grams from her big palettes. So these have 1.32 grams each of product times 10. There are 18 in here times 1.1. So they are smaller in size and then the pack packaging style being different, that is how she has grabbed that cost and made it even lower than her full size mothership palettes. So for my look today, which I'm actually really, really impressed with, I love how glitzy and glamour it looks. I think it's perfect for holiday. I actually started with a matte and I started with one of the new mattes that is unique to this palette. It's called Venetian, Venusian Orchid, <laughs> I think. And this one, you guys, she is getting awfully, awfully close to the matte quality that I love in these 10 pan palettes. I've maintained that the mattes just seem like a little dry drier in the six pans and people might think I'm crazy but that's just how I feel even with the rose decadence she got closer for sure but this one is still a little drier than the mattes in these palettes I don't get it it's got to be either in my head or something but there are some slight differences in feel and how they actually translate to the lid I notice like slightly better blendability with the mattes in here just slightly though she's getting very very qu close to the quality that is in her most expensive palettes, which I appreciate. So the first matte in here, I felt like did a great job. I did prime my lids first with my Smashbox 24 hour primer. And this one layered beautifully, very minimal fallout. And actually it did blend out very, very well. The next shade that I went into is one of her duochromes. This is from Galactic Gold. This shade is called Electron. And this one has a beautiful purpley pinky shift. Super, super beautiful. I did actually apply this with a finger because I thought that that one had a little bit more of that texture to it. It wasn't a super textured shimmer, but it has enough of a texture that I felt like I needed to use my hand for that one. So I did apply it with my fingertip. It did a beautiful job just gliding over the lid. First gold that I used is also from Galactic Gold. This is called Galactic Gold. <laughs> and this is where I actually use my mixing medium. I dipped a teeny bit of my brush 
into this little guy and then I dipped it into the pan. Now this is not my typical best method because I like to scrape some of the pigment off of the pan and then mix it in a bowl just so that it keeps the mixing fluid from settling into the pan of product itself. I don't know if that's a thing, but if you guys know, let me know, but I just don't wanna saturate all of the pigment with like dried mixing fluid and over time if I keep dipping it into the palette itself I don't know if it's gonna do that so I just did this just to kind of see and I did a tiny little tap and I just glided that pigment over my lid next I went in with a purple shimmer this is also from another Star Wars palette the other one the dark galaxy the shade is called Odyssey also the mixing fluid to try to keep it a little bit more of that like melted look you definitely don't have to use the fluid it's just something that I've learned that I really really liked this one also did a great job applying fallout minimal like I said the last one I touched up was another gold and all the shades are on the back of the palette by the way so that's a little bit different too the Pat McGrath palettes normally come with like a slip that has the shades just on top of it and if you lose the slip then you lose the shades <laughs> which sucks right that's the only thing I don't really like so I actually love that she put a sticker on the back I think that's very very handy and the shade that I used for the center is also one of the new shades it's called lunar champagne this is one that also has a bit of a texture to it I wanted to keep it more diffused so I used a brush but pigment is gonna fall when it has that heaviness to it it just needs a little bit of help so overall would I recommend this palette the answer is yes however however if you have the Star Wars collection, you were lucky enough to get those two, Dark Galaxy and Galactic Gold. You do have the majority of the shades in here. I therefore don't think that this is a buy that you would need because you're therefore spending 78 American or 105 103 Canadian on six new shades, which that's hell expensive because they're not as big as her big pans here so unless you're like a hella Pat McGrath fan and you would like to collect everything she makes even though you have the two Star Wars palettes you want this because it's just shades you don't have a different story you will like them because the shades are nice out of the three mattes one of them is from Dark Galaxy and two of them are from the new shades in this palette like unique to Celestial Divinity and to me, so the one on the far left, I'm going to put a little arrow, that one to me is just like a smidgen drier than the two other two new mattes. I don't think it's going to be enough to be like, this is a crap shade and these two aren't. It's certainly not like that, but you'll be able to tell when you swatch them that one of them has a smoother drag. The other one is slightly drier. Overall though, I think this is a fantastic buy, you guys. Honestly, I think this is something that she is getting great at getting that matte quality to start matching some of her more expensive palettes. That is amazing. There is no astral shades in here. So those beautiful like creamy gel like, you know, top coat kind of shades like those top glitter glazes that she has. They're not in here. Unfortunately, she just offers a textured shimmer, some duochrome, some nice gorgeous mattes. So there are some great varieties in here, but but the Astrals are not one of them. I do like the packaging style better of the lacquer packaging. You guys know I'm a bit of like a packaging freak though. I don't mind this one. It's not my favorite ever, but I do like that, you know, if she's gonna cut corners somewhere, it's not the formula. <laughs> so I prefer that. Overall, very impressed with this. Like I said, I am not one that got the Star Wars palettes, so I will find a video where there's some commentary on that because for those of you that want to know consistency-wise, I think that's important to know. So I I will link a video more than likely I'm gonna find Alicia doing that so I will more than likely link her video and just make sure that she commented on that now you guys waited until the very end and I am super happy that you did you guys know that I like to bury giveaways in my videos I don't like to title my videos with giveaway I like to reward people that are subscribed to me that watch me regularly and for those of you that support me no matter what I love giving back it makes me feel good so this is another little catastrophe that resulted in a giveaway which is kind of good for you guys I ordered this palette on launch and like on the site and I actually ordered it to my US address thinking it would be faster because it takes her like six years to get to Canada. <laughs> That's dramatic, but you know what I mean. I thought that the shipping to the US would be a lot better. No, she only offered free domestic shipping this time. There was no expedited method, so it took forever to get to the US as well. So it is now coming to me 
in a couple of days, I will now have a second palette. This palette in my hand right now is from Sephora Canada and they were hella fast. So the second palette when it comes will be a giveaway prize. For those of you watching this video, all you have to do is comment on this video, make sure you're subscribed to me and make sure that you are talking about something nice in the comments. I feel like that's kind of self-explanatory, but I have received some contest entries with hate before. <laughs> Do you think that this is like a viable entry when you insult me and then want my giveaway prize? <laughs> so do put something nice, spread the love, talk about something that you want to talk about, whether it's commentary on this palette or if you want to get this palette or not. Thumbs up this video as well. And most importantly, in your comment, please leave either an Instagram handle or an email address of how I can contact you. This will be open for two weeks. So the draw date for this is going to be October 20th. I will be notifying that person on that date via Instagram or email, depending on your contact method. And until my next one, take care. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys. You and me, everything that we've been through has made us strong. You won't believe we've had our great, but sorry, there's a light inside of us. It shows the way